All righty. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, in my opinion, TGIF, thank goodness it's Friday. Uh, we couldn't think of a better way to end the week than joining us for our discussion um, this evening with our biochemistry program. So I'm very excited that you are all here with us um, for a great conversation with um, Professor Furtuck of the biochemistry program, as well as um, four of our amazing students. And we are going to have the next hour or so to um, take live questions from you. So um, at any point in time, please do feel free to um, post any of your questions in our Q&A feature um, box on the bottom of your screen. Um, likewise, throughout the um, presentation, if there's any additional information, I'll be posting it as well. So you can have um, links to different websites, et cetera. All righty. So I think we can go ahead and get started. Professor Furtick, welcome. How are you this evening? Very good. All right. Well, I'm so glad to be able to talk with you this evening. So um, I've been the director of biochemistry for about a year. And something you're going to notice this evening is I'm a fan of biochemistry art. Um, this is Tata binding protein over on the right in a really interesting depiction. And you're going to see a couple of other um, interesting little um, um, depictions as we go through. I have a few things that I want to show you and I have four students that I want to introduce you to and we're gonna have plenty of time for questions. So I'm going to show you another little image before we get started. Um, this is a virus over on the left. Um, some people think negatively about viruses and they can be destructive. Um, they can also be very useful tools um, in our study of a variety of different processes and in therapeutics. Um, so this is one that I like in particular, just to get us thinking positively about our study of viruses and other aspects of biochemistry. What we're going to talk about today is um, the program and the relevance of biochemistry. Um, so a few things to say about that. I want to make sure that we all know what biochemistry is, um, the fact that we have an accredited program here, um, that the research is very multidisciplinary, um, co-op opportunities, and um, what a plus one program is, and that we have a variety of possibilities here. Um, and then, of course, you want to know what you might do after you graduate. Um, and then we have some students who are about to graduate, and you're going to talk to them. So our grads have a variety of careers. I want you to, I want to give you a sense of that. And I want to tell you a little bit about what students might do if they go on to advanced degree programs. And of course, you want to hear from our students who are here and hear what types of questions they can answer for you. Um, certainly, there'll be time for that. So the relevance of biochemistry, um, so many possibilities. There's really hardly any way to summarize how important biochemistry is, but I'm going to try and I'm going to do it just three ways. So um, if we think about what biochemistry is, we can think about it just from its name. It's really just understanding the chemistry of life, which is everything. It's so important. Um, on the left, I have um, coronavirus. And that's something that we can um, immediately understand the importance of right away, hopefully. Um, we need biochemistry in order to be able to understand how it works and how to fix the problems that we have globally right now. Um, in the middle, I have some images to help us um, to be thinking about um, ways of targeting cancer signaling. That's something that biochemistry can really help us with. And then over on the right, I have an image representing how biochemistry can be used to maybe examine and fix environmental problems. For example, thinking about proteins um, that can be engineered to make better biodegradable plastics. So um, I've tried to give you an idea of the broad range of possibilities for study in biochemistry. And now I want to tell you a little bit about how many majors we have. And so I can do that pretty easily over here. Our program began in 1995, and it's been growing quite steadily. Um, it also is an accredited program. It's accredited by the American Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. That's been true since 2013. It was one of the first to be accredited when they started that accreditation process. So um, I want to tell you why to be impressed with that. The areas that are scored by that professional society are the curriculum and also the institution. 
and also the faculty. So we score highly in all of those areas. Not every major is accredited. The whole university, Northeastern is accredited, but a major is not always accredited. Ours is. And so that means that we're considered to be strong in all of these three areas. Um, an outside accrediting body has looked and evaluated it. We were last accredited in the year 2020. And um, so that's going to continue for some time now. Biochemistry is definitely multidisciplinary. I have a couple of images here of our students to show you. We've got um, Julian and Hannah on the left looking very natural over in the top left um, in the lab of one of our biology faculty members. And then in the bottom left, uh, biochemistry club um, executive board members, um, very proud at a conference that they organized with me. And um, I wanna give you here an example of um, the types of departments that faculty members are affiliated with where we have students who are working in those labs. So I mentioned you're gonna hear from four students and um, you can ask them about the research that they're involved in. And you might think that if we're in biochemistry, then the faculty members who are researchers um, in that the labs have to be biology maybe or chemistry, but you can see here, it's pretty unlimited. This is just the list of um, departments so far. Could be more in the future. Experiential education, um, that's gonna be one of the reasons why you come to Northeastern. And um, this is the type of slide that I love making. I took a look at um, recent co-ops that students have done. And you're gonna, of course, hear more about that from our current students today. Um, but I just tried to arrange some recent co-op um, um, placements by over on the left, more biotech, over on the right, more clinical. Um, you should see names that you recognize. Pfizer, for example, Moderna, for example, Takeda, Merck, um, many more over towards the right, Harvard Medical School, um, Massachusetts General Hospital, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and more. Um, these are fantastic opportunities and we welcome your questions. Um, the students that you're going to hear from today have had these opportunities and um, would love to talk about them. Um, I wanna make sure that you're aware that um, biochemistry because of the type of curriculum that it has is compatible with four plus one master's degrees. If you're just beginning a bachelor's degree, you might not want to be thinking about another degree. Um, you don't have to, I just, and I would never pressure someone, but I just want you to be aware that this is a possibility. Starting in a student's fifth academic semester, um, if they meet the GPA requirements, students can choose to apply for the plus one program, which means that they're double counting certain undergrad um, courses for their master's degree. And so this has um, been shown to be pretty popular. I wanna make sure that you know about it. For biochemistry specifically, um, we're eligible for four plus one programs. Um, here they're listed alphabetically, but I'll tell you them in popularity um, instead by far the most popular one at present is biotechnology. You don't have to do that. We just notice that um, students find it appealing. There are 10 different concentrations available. Um, for example, entrepreneurship, you could um, specialize in that and take courses in the business school um, towards your master's. Um, second most popular is bioinformatics. Newer, um, so we've had a couple of students do this so far is chemistry and by far the newest one, no one has done this yet is chemical engineering. So all of these four are compatible with um, doing a biochemistry undergraduate degree provided that you meet the GPA requirements. So um, students like this about our biochemistry major. Um, in terms of careers, I don't wanna to spend too long on this. I just wanna make sure that you're aware that there's a lot of flexibility and many possibilities. We have the foundation, which is our major. And I wanna make sure that you know that um, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get is what is the difference between a biochemistry major 
and a cell and molecular biology major. I'll just answer that right at the top. Um, a biochemistry major has more of a foundation in math and physics and uses that at the upper level. Um, and of course, you can expect more chemistry courses that's in the name of our degree. But um, it's one of the most frequently asked questions that I get because at the lower levels, um, there's a lot of overlap between those two majors. Um, so it's the math and the physics and um, more chemistry courses. So in terms of um, the most typical careers that are compatible with this degree, I've split it into five areas by studying what our graduates do, keeping in mind that um, this degree has been around at our school since 1995. Um, the first area is biotechnology. I've grayed out the part below because we're not doing a career seminar. The second one, healthcare, very popular. Biotechnology is very popular as well. Healthcare, um, government and law, academics and innovation. So that would include being a professor, teaching in another setting, um, entrepreneurship of different types, and then consulting and financial services. So um, this is the basis for a whole career talk as well. But um, I, I would say our most common areas are biotechnology and healthcare. Um, I mentioned before, I don't want you to panic and think that this degree isn't good enough. However, because it's a great degree, but if you know that you're interested in pursuing a career in medicine and you're already thinking, I wonder, I'd like to go to medical school. Am I going to get in? I can answer that question. Um, I looked, I made this slide in January of this year. We have um, former students who are right now in these medical schools, great schools. You're going to recognize the names. Um, our graduates are doing really well. Maybe you don't have to do a PhD, but what if you wanted to? Um, I looked, this is current as of January of this year. Um, if you were thinking, am I gonna get into the PhD school of my choice? These are all schools where we currently have graduates doing PhD programs. You'll recognize names from here. Students get into schools that interest them. This degree is great preparation. I'm gonna introduce you to some students now. You've heard enough from me. I have one slide per student for four students. So um, I have a little bit of information about Shalina. At the top, I've put where she put, uh, where she went for her um, co-ops. At the bottom, I put some notable um, items about um, where she has been. And I've included um, some, you know, key fun facts. And then Shalina, I'm going to ask you, you don't need to read everything, but just pull out some of the things that you think are most notable from here, whatever you think people should um, take away from you so that they um, are aware of what kinds of questions you invite people to ask you the most. Yeah, so hi, everyone. My name is Shalina. Um, and I'm graduating this semester as of as we all are, but I did my first call up at Vistera uh, Inc. studying antibody discovery. And I kind of discovered that I didn't really like or didn't really like the biotech atmosphere as much as I liked academia. So I went back and did my second co-op at Northeastern um, in the day lab where I'm currently doing uh, my capstone research as well. Um, and I guess throughout my experience at Northeastern, I've tried to just do things that I don't think that I'll be able to do again. So I studied abroad um, after my first co-op in Ireland. I was supposed to do a uh, dialogue, but that got canceled. And um, I currently am on the women's club water polo team um, and involved in the College of Science Student, Dur Student Diversity Advisory Council. Thanks, Shalina. So you um, say a little bit more about the dialogue. I guess that was probably in spring of 2020. Where were you planning to go? I was planning to go to Vietnam and Cambodia and the classes were like completely nothing in, involved in science. It was food writing and advanced writing. So it was really going to be this like out of experience that I would have never gotten before, but um, I'm still looking forward to eventually visiting Vietnam and Cambodia at some point in life. 
Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Um, so Shalina is one of our most awarded students. I, I feel like I did her a disservice in the lower left here. I didn't say enough. Um, if you're not familiar with, the, familiar with the Goldwater, it's one of the highest awards that you can um, secure while you're an undergrad. Um, and um, the Rhodes Scholarship is spectacular. So a finalist there. Um, Huntington 100, I threw that in there at the last second. Um, I haven't listed everything that um, she secured, but the Huntington 100 is um, a list of the top 100 students of the year on campus, keeping in mind we have an a plentitude of students on campus um, as selected by many different metrics. And um, it's very unusual to be selected before you're a senior, very, very unusual. But um, Shalina got it last year, one year before graduation. Um, so that was very impressive. Um, let's move on. And so now you get a sense, hopefully, of the kinds of things you might like to ask Shalina about. Um, and let's move on to Blake. So you can see that he did a dialogue of civilizations. This is a short, um, compressed um, experience. He went to Ireland. Um, you can see his minor is in mechanical engineering and in math, so two different things. Um, you can see what his um, co-ops are. And tell us a little bit more, Blake. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things I really like about Northeastern, I think makes it unique is the co-op program. So it was really a nice opportunity for me um, coming in, not necessarily knowing what I wanted to do. I was able to basically work in three very different professions in different cities. The hospital for special surgery was in New York City um, and kind of find out from these experiences what it was that I wanted to do. Um, so I, I worked with um, patients in a physical therapy clinic. And then I did some neuroscience research at Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And for my most recent work, I was studying uh, the gut and cancer and developing um, basically like a database of drugs for a small startup in Cambridge. Um, I honestly, I, I think the Northeastern is great. It kind of has like a, a small school feel, but also where like you you see people you know probably on a daily basis, but it's also large in the sense of the resources you have available. So on campus, I've been involved in clubs. I've worked as a teaching assistant and peer mentor for some of my past classes. Um, I've been a personal trainer on campus since my freshman year, so which is actually a really fun experience. Um, and uh, yeah, it's also a great chance to get involved with any faculty or research areas that interest you. Thanks, Blake. Um, I, I loved everything that you put on here. One of my favorites, though, is that you couldn't pick a favorite course. <laughs> that was great for me. Um, let's move on. And we've got Morgan next. Um, I checked with her ahead of time, and Fallon was not a co-op. Um, I thought it was really interesting that she worked for Fallon Ambulance, and so I left it on there. Um, she did two co-ops, I believe, um, but I left the Fallon experience on there in case any of you have questions about it. Some of our students do get their EMT certification and do ambulance service work if they're pre-med, um, and so perhaps you have questions about it. And you can see that she did a dialogue in the UK and she has additional abroad experience. Um, Morgan, tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, so sorry for the confusion. I um, did do a clinical co-op at um, uh, Tufts Medical Center. Yeah. So I do have some, uh, some clinical co actual co-op experience, but the Fallon was like something that was on my own, but a lot of Northeastern students um, actually go work at Fallon and I think they do do co-op sometimes. Um, but hi, I'm Morgan and- So I messed um, that up. You did do three co-ops. I just put yeah. down something, I see. Yeah, so I did the third co-op at um, Tufts Medical Center as a clinical care technician. So in a different clinical role. Um, but yeah, so obviously I'm a biochem major. I don't have any minors. Um, sorry, not as cool as some of the other uh, students, but um, I came to Northeastern really confused if I wanted to do pre-med or if I wanted to be research oriented. And I think that one thing that Northeastern was amazing with was helping me figure out what I wanted to do. And that was something that always worried me was like, what do I want to do after college? Because it, it flies by. Um, 
and having all these co-ops and internship experiences that were heavily supported by the university and, and my co-op coordinator and all my professors and everything were um, super helpful in helping me decide that I did want to go into research. Um, I'll be going to get my PhD at UC Berkeley UCSF Joint Bioengineering Program. Um, and yeah, so a lot of experiences led up to me making that decision. I decided after being an EMT and working at uh, uh, Tufts Medical Center that the uh, doctor role wasn't for me, but I knew that I liked helping people and I loved science. Um, so I thought that research would be a way for me to still help people and be super creative. And <laughs> thank you uh, for the compliment. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and then the one thing I'll say um, that I think makes Northeastern cooler than all the other Boston campuses is that we actually have a campus. Um, I feel like I don't know, I don't feel that in, in any other campus that I've been to in Boston, except for schools that are maybe a little outside the city. Um, but we have so many nice like green spaces and places to hang out and the school makes sure we have like cute little lawn chairs everywhere. So if anyone has been to Northeastern to visit, you can, you might've seen that, but um, I think that makes Northeastern special and especially during COVID, it's amazingly important to have those outdoor spaces. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Morgan. All right, we got, we, excuse me, we have one more and it's gonna be Joanna. And um, so Joanna has a minor in math. Um, she's another researcher and um, she's um, being shown here in Panama, but she has multiple um, abroad experiences. And I'm hoping we're gonna get to hear about that, Joanna. Hi everyone, I'm Joanna. Um, as Dr. Fortek pointed out already, I'm graduating this May from the biochemistry program and I do have a minor in mathematics. Um, I too entered my undergraduate, not sure what exactly I wanted to do with my life, feeling a little overwhelmed by all the possibilities. But as Blake and Morgan have already talked to a bit, the co-op program is a great way to figure out what it is you want to do. I was always interested in um, pursuing the medical route. But another thing Northeastern really encourages is getting involved in research pretty early on. And so I find myself applying to MD, PhD programs this June. Dr. Fortek also spoke a bit about my global experience. I actually was involved with the NUN program and I studied abroad in Greece my freshman year. I then got involved with Northeastern's global medical brigades and I went on two different alternative spring break trips to Panama and then Honduras. And this year I was supposed to lead a brigade to Ghana but unfortunately with COVID we were unable to travel to Ghana. Um, so yeah, was, that's something that I really got involved with was Northeastern's Global Medical Brigade. The other um, experience that I absolutely loved the most at my time at Northeastern was I got involved with Boston Children's Hospital. Like I said, I've always been passionate about pursuing, pursuing a medical degree. And I don't know what it is about Boston Children's, but every time I walk into that hospital, I absolutely, absolutely love being there. So those are just a few things I did in my undergraduate that I loved. All right, thank you so much, Joanna. So um, we want to get to some questions very soon. So I cannot leave you without showing you um, some more of our students. And so I just wanna have you picture that you might be one of our graduates. This is last year's um, picture. And so I'm in the process of assembling this year's graduation photo. Um, and so it's going to be a little bigger. We have a bigger graduating class this year, but this is the 2020 class. And um, so I'm getting the new one ready for 2021. They have a lot of exciting opportunities ahead of them, as you can imagine. Um, and so back to biochemistry art, which I really adore. This is from C. Um, and so what we've been talking about is um, biochemistry, what it is, why you might come here. It's got a lot of relevance. It's accredited. It's a growing program. There are a lot of opportunities for hands-on research, um, internships, and multidisciplinary um, 
focuses and um, it's totally optional, but if you wanted to do a plus one masters, there are several different disciplines that you could do that in that are compatible with biochemistry if you want some more specialization. And we talked about what you could do after graduation. And then we talked to people who are graduating. And so we are ready for your questions. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Those were great introductions um, with so much information there. Um, I am going to start this um, Q&A session with a really fun question that was posed to Blake. And it has nothing to do with biochemistry, but we want to know about you as a person. How did you become a personal trainer at Northeastern? <laughs> Thanks for yes. the question, Stephen. <laughs> uh, so that was actually um, almost by chance. I, I knew that I really enjoyed uh, exercise and exercise science, and I considered actually going into physical therapy. And then I still remember one of the accepted students stays walking around campus when they had all the um, club stations set up. And I ran into a table where they were advertising for being a personal trainer on campus, as well as a group fitness instructor. It's a completely student led program. Um, basically, you enroll and you take a one semester long course where they kind of teach you what you need to know to get your certification exam. And uh, the course itself is actually taught by an upperclassman, um, which I had the luck of actually being able to teach for the past couple of years. Uh, and then you, yeah, you just work with a bunch of different students and you get to personal train everyone from um, students on campus to faculty and even people just in the surrounding areas who basically pay for a membership at Marino. Excellent. And Blake, I'm going to stay with you here because I think your story is really interesting. You have this personal, um, you know, love for this area. And you said you almost went into physical therapy, but you did some research in physical therapy previously. Um, so how have you been able to do all this, you know, sort of interdisciplinary work at Northeastern? Yeah, I, I think that's a really good question. Uh, so I kind of realized with my, my first co-op, which was in more intended to be sort of my clinical experience that I really liked working with patients, especially in a physical therapy rehabilitation setting. Um, so it had made me consider applying to the physical therapy program, which I actually did um, at one point. And then um, I realized that I think that I would rather go into medicine. So in the past semester, um, I've always been interested in orthopedics. So in the past semester, I've focused my capstone work on working with um, Dr. Stefanik and his uh, basically musculoskeletal um, lab that's focused on studying how rehabilitation can help patients that have knee arthritis. And sort of my long-term goal now is uh, kind of blending my mechanical engineering minor with my interest in medicine. And I wanna go into um, implant design, specifically knee implants. Thanks, Blake. That is um, so interesting. And I love how you've been able to kind of blend all these different areas together um, in your path here. Okay. So I see a lot of questions that are coming in. I'm going to go to Joanna for this question and shout out to Morgan's cat too. Um, <laughs> here she's been making an appearance. I love it. Um, Sorry. No, no, don't be. Um, Joanna, we have questions that are coming in about um, explaining what an MD PhD is. You had mentioned it. And I know um, Shalina as well um, had mentioned it. Do you want to talk a little bit um, about what it is exactly? Yeah, I can, I can attempt to answer what an MD PhD program is. So I see the question asks if Northeastern offers this program. So to begin with an MD PhD, it's a dual degree program. So you'll complete medical school and also a PhD program. Traditionally, an MD, PhD, you do the first two years of medical school, complete your PhD, and then finish medical school, the remaining two years of medical school. Northeastern does not have an affiliated medical school, so they do not offer an MD, PhD program. However, if you are interested in pursuing a PhD, we do have PhD programs at Northeastern. Um, otherwise, this combined dual degree is not offered at Northeastern. I don't know if that really answers, that's kind of a brief overview of what an MD-PhD is. I don't know if I can get into more detail. 
Yeah, we can see if more questions come in. I think that's a really good broad um, spectrum to um, take in that information. And we are lucky at Northeastern, even though we are not affiliated with one specific medical school, we have students who are doing work at all of the medical schools, especially in the Boston area, which is fun and exciting um, for our students. Okay, um, I'm going to go over to Morgan next. Um, there are a bunch of questions coming in about how did you become and uh, get your EMT certification? Um, and are there opportunities for students if they already have their license um, to work while they're at Northeastern? Um, yeah, so I went back home. I'm from Connecticut. So I went home to get my, um, I did a one month really intense full-time course just to get it done over the summer. Um, and then, so that was in um, Windsor, Connecticut, I think. So around here, I know that there are EMT programs already. Um, <clears throat> I think that some training, I know that um, Northeastern has their own EMT club where they do, um, they might have their own um, courses and everything. That's something that I don't know much about, unfortunately, because I did it, I am not part of the club, but um, <clears throat> you can get, you can get trained. There are so many places to get your EMT certification. All you have to do is hop on Google um, and you can find one. They are a little bit pricey, unfortunately. Um, but once you do get your EMT certification, whichever route you take, you can do just two classes a week at night. They're super flexible with those. Um, there's so many organizations um, and companies around Boston, in and around Boston that actually um, are actively hiring students um, to work as EMT basics and ENT advanced if you get to that point. Um, I know Fallon is just one of them. I have friends who work at Brewster, Cataldo, um, Armstrong. There's so many different companies around um, that, yeah. and. Um, Somebody just put in the chat that EMT is like, that you can do it as a co-op too. Um, some of them might have co-ops organized with Northeast, Northeastern and some of them, you can make your own co-op too. I don't know if that was already discussed, but um, if you really like one of the EMT organizations that you work for, you can totally make that a co-op um, and just work there full-time for six months. Um, so that kind of flexibility with the co-op program is super nice. I have a few friends who have made their own co-ops. Um, and they really enjoyed them. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers the question. Oh, and then in terms of like being an EMT while being a student, you can definitely do that because a lot of colleges are in Boston. A lot of organizations know that when they hire students, they're going to be taking classes. So a lot of um, companies will have you do like one eight to 12 hour shift a week or two shifts if you can handle it, um, which is really nice. So you can get some like experience and money on the side um, while still being a student, having time for your homework and everything. Great, thanks, Morgan. Yeah, in Boston, there certainly is no shortage of um, hospitals in the area. So there's always need for EMTs. Okay, Shalina, I'm gonna go to you next. Um, there's a really great question that's coming in about, um, essentially, did you have a lot of experience coming into college in the lab? And um, furthermore, I want to ask, did you just think of yourself as a regular high school student going into college? Or did you think that you were going to be, um, you know, this great researcher when you came out? That's a very good question. Um, to answer the first one, no, I had absolutely no experience coming into college at all. Um, so that was like a little intimidating for me because I, I didn't know anything about like a research lab and like what it entails so if you don't have any experience like don't worry about that because you will gain it over the course of your co-ops or just being involved in research labs and I guess my attitude like coming into college I was really excited but I didn't really think that I was going to be some sort of like big shot and like take over the world but I mean I guess I'm on my way <laughs> I don't know but yeah like you I think you just develop the confidence over time you don't need it you know initially it's definitely nice but yeah great thanks yeah i i will say the majority of our students do not um usually have lab experience um and that is exactly what um working in the labs are all about uh dr furtick do you actually want to um add anything to that about what the value is from the faculty point of view of having our undergrads in uh research labs 
Oh, sure. Um, sorry, I was looking through the chat to see which ones I could answer. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up as much as possible. No problem. Um, well, um, was the question, how do the faculty benefit? Yeah, well, I'm just asking as a follow up for from Shalena's response, um, you know, she was saying about uh, how valuable it is, even without having any prior experience in a lab setting. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious from a faculty point of view, um, how do faculty feel about having our undergraduates in their um, in their labs on campus? Oh, you know, um, there's so many different personalities on campus. Sometimes I hear that um, um, faculty want someone to start as a freshman and they want to nurture them the whole way through and they they prefer a commitment um and it's like they want someone who's really interested and passionate and to have them start as early as possible um and then sometimes i hear faculty who say you know it's really nice when they come back from co-op because they're so fired up and they've really um um, they've learned some additional skills and they have additional motivation because they really see what that lab experience is for. That's a different personality. Um, I think the, um, the first one that I mentioned is a, an ultra mentor, <laughs> um, who really wants to see someone's growth. Um, the second one that I mentioned mentioned is a little bit more practical and um, wants to make sure that someone has a lot of proficiencies before entering the lab. Um, I think both of those are pretty, um, pretty common. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, and of course, depending on how students are working in the lab, they might need more uh, skill sets um, to enter into a lab as well. So that's great. Um, well, and if I could add some, some lab work is more expensive than others. <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> And so that that might be a consideration as well. So that some makes some people more cautious. Great, thank you. That's a very good point, actually. Blake, I'm going to go to you with the next question. Um, did you find it manageable to be a biochem uh, student and be able to balance, you know, other things like a social life and having fun and research and whatnot? How did you manage? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a good question. Um, I. I think it all depends on kind of what what you want to do. There's uh, enough room. It's like the the biochemistry major. Like you still end up having electives, and you have plenty of free time. Um, I actually do remember coming into college and being a little worried because people would always tell me, "Oh, you're going into a major that has a lot of labs. It's going to take up a lot of additional time compared to other majors." And at the end of the day. Um, you still have plenty of time to pursue kind of other activities that you want to do. So for me, like personal training and doing the research were things that I actually enjoyed doing. So it was almost like a, a break from doing classwork. Uh, but I also had plenty of time to continue to like for my own um, personal exercise, as well as um, doing other things for wellness, whether it was just like walking around the city or pursuing another opportunity. And also when you go on co-op, you'll have uh, quite a bit of free time because you're you're working a full-time job you'll probably be nine to five um, so that means that you have your evenings you have your weekends which is actually a really um, big transition when you go from classes to to co-op and then you get to your weekends and you're like wow I can actually go and do a day trip somewhere if I want to so yeah I I, I think you make the most of it great thanks Blake Yes, you learn how to adult during the co-op experience too and uh, have fun after 5 p.m. <laughs> Joanna, I'm going to go to you. There was a question that came in uh, from Sydney. Sydney, thanks for the question. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your experience at Boston Children's Hospital and uh, Northeastern's Medical Brigades? Absolutely, I would love to. So I got involved in Northeastern's Medical Brigades my sophomore year. Um, and what we do, we are just one chapter of, I believe, four chapters currently on campus. Global Brigades has many chapters on campus. There's Global Public Health Brigades. There's a Business Brigade. They're trying to bring the Dental Brigade to Northeastern. And then there's Global Medical Brigades. So Global Medical Brigades, the entire year we spend prepping for our trip to typically a country in Central America. Um, I mentioned we were supposed to go to Ghana this year, but Ghana is the only other location outside of Central America. 
Um, so I went to Panama my sophomore year and essentially the idea of global medical brigades is that we bring doctors from the US to an area in a Central America, American company. And as students, we're able to run and we are able to organize and lead a clinic um, in, that, in that community. So that's really fun. Um, and then we also have public health days. So one of the days in Panama, we spent um, doing a poster session on any public health issues that we felt we wanted to talk about. So one of the topics was um, accessing clean water. Um, and reminding locals to boil water if they can't assure that it's clean. Um, I also went to Honduras and for our public health day there, we actually were digging irrigation systems. Um, and if you're more interested in public health, there's an entire brigade dedicated to public health. So I know the public health brigade last year actually built latrines for people so that they were able to separate their drinking supply from also um, you like generating waterways, using the bathroom, showering, et cetera. Um, so yeah, um, this year I'm president of the club. And again, I mentioned we were supposed to go to Ghana, but unfortunately with COVID, we're, we were unable to go on the trip. Um, my freshman year, I got involved at Boston Children's Hospital just for personal reasons. I actually had two operations at Boston Children's Hospital. And I think it was that experience that really exposed me to the medical field. And I realized that I wanna have the same impact on people's lives that my surgeon had on my life. My life, So I think that's for me why walking into Boston Children's is such a special place. I know what it felt like to be a patient there. And so I got involved my freshman year and each Friday I would volunteer for four hours um, on one of the floors. I was on the orthopedic trauma floor and I would just get to hang out with kids all day. So it was really fun. Um, I even, some of the patients that have been there for extended periods of time, their family, would see that I was there and they would be able to leave the hospital for a few hours out of, out of the day, as opposed to spending all day in the hospital with their child. So that was really special to be trusted with somebody's child in the hospital. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. That's a um, really powerful commentary and you're certainly gonna be an amazing physician too, um, because you so you're, you're going in with the, the right attitude and the right reason. So that's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I am going to go over to, um, let's go over to Shalena. Can you talk a little bit about um, the co-op process and what supports are there and how students actually find co-ops and get jobs? Yeah. So usually before you come into to Northeastern, there is, you, you're kind of, kind of randomly sorted into a, what we call a spring co-op cycle or a fall co-op cycle. So you'll either go on co-op from January to June or from July to December. And the semester before you would go on co-op, you take a course called like um, professional development or like a co-op course essentially. And there with your co-op advisor, you learn how to write a resume, how to apply for jobs, um, how to do well in interviews. So you get mock interviews, uh, resume reviews. And we have this entire portal that's like internal to Northeastern and you jobs are posted from companies in Boston and across the world, to be honest, and across the country. And you're able to just go in and apply to whatever job that you would want to apply to. And then um, you're able, you will get contacted by the company and then you go through their interview process. Um, once you get a co-op offer, you have, I believe, like two days to accept the offer, but you're, I know there was another question kind of um, along the lines of the co-op cycles and how they work with the five and four years. Typically, if you do five years, you do three co-ops. Um, you don't always have to. And typically, if you do four years, you do two co-ops. And you're able to like mix and match if you want to do like a clinical co-op and a like a more biotech or academic based co-op, you can do things like that. So it's a really nice time to really work um, and understand if it's something that you want to continue to do, or if you want to try something else during your next co-op. Great, thanks. And that's actually a perfect segue because um, I do also want to talk about the, the uh, our unique situation of four years versus five years, but there's also the four and a half year option as well. Um, so show of hands, how many of you are graduating in four years? 
All right. So we have two and then um, Blake and Morgan are five years or Blake, are you four and a half? Okay. So five. we have a, a, a bunch of different people. Morgan, why don't we start with you? How did you choose the five-year option um, and know that was the best fit for you? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. Um, I actually knew from the beginning that I wanted to do five years. Um, I wasn't personally in a rush to get a real person job. Uh, and I <laughs> thought that I would really like college. So, um, and I still really like, I am continuing to go to school and grad school. Um, but I also, the biggest decision was knowing that co-op, I mean, no, knowing that Northeastern had a really good co-op program. Um, I wanted to take advantage of that and I wanted to do three co-ops and I wanted to know like, what do I like? What do I not like? And I had the perfect opportunity to ex explore exactly that. So I knew that I wanted to do the five-year program. Um, there's really no rush to um, get out of college. Pers I can personally say like as my, maybe my own opinion slash advice would just be to like take your time. And every year I have learned so much about myself and what I wanna do and what I like and what I don't like as much. Um, and I think that fifth year like has been super integral. I completely changed my career decision in the last year. So I think that last year was totally um, useful. And if anyone's kind of on the fence between four and five, if you really know what you want to do, then that's awesome. And maybe you only want to do one or two co-ops. But personally, I really wanted to do those three co-ops. And I had three totally different co-op experiences. And each one was so important to shaping me into the person and my career into the way it, it's, it looks like right now. So that's my two cents on why I chose five years. Thank you. Your two cents are very valuable. Um, I think, and also you highlight the importance of just trying things out and figuring it out. It is perfectly fine if you do not know um, what your path is going to look like in four or five years when you enter Northeastern. Um, you have time to try things out and discover. Now, Joanna, you had mentioned you are four years. I have a feeling because you want to go for MD PhD, that might weigh into that decision as well. Can you talk a little bit about how you chose the four year path? Yeah, so I definitely, um, when I entered into my undergraduate, as I mentioned, I, I knew that I wanted to go to medical school. Um, research was something that I only just got involved with in my undergraduate in my freshman year. So I had no prior research experience and I ended up loving it and I couldn't decide between the two. That being said, I always was like, I absolutely, I wanna go straight into medical school. I just wanna be a doctor, um, but you know, like getting involved with research and then kind of having a tough time deciding, you know, how, how do I choose between the MD or the PhD? I love both of them. And I couldn't see my life without having both. Um, so that's when I decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to graduate in four years. I'm taking a gap year, but I'm not in a rush to just go immediately into school right after my undergraduate. I will also say that um, COVID did play a role into that. I was originally four and a half years. I was going to take half, like a six month gap year, I guess it would have been the equivalent of, but the co-op that I was supposed to go on was through MGH, um, through a lab at Massachusetts General Hospital, for those of you that aren't familiar with MGH. Um, the lab was shut down because of COVID. So I ended up postponing my, postponing isn't the right word. I never did a second co-op, but I was able to start working in the fall through that position, just not officially as a co-op. Um, because classes were remote, I was able to complete essentially my coursework that fall, fall of 2020. And then I'm just working full time now. Great, thank you. Okay, and Blake, did you take any summer courses on campus during your time? Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually did. Uh, so I was the, um, well, let's see, I, I ended up doing the, the fall, yeah, the fall co-op cycle. So mm -hmm. I, I would do summer one classes usually. Um, freshman year, I think I did summer one and summer two classes, but it, it's not something you have to do. I actually really liked the summer classes. I found it to be a really nice time of year to be on campus. It's really warm. It's easy to do work outside. Campus is actually very quiet. Um, there's like only a fraction of the population on campus. So you could pretty much get the best seats on the on the quad or in the coffee shops, uh, pretty much do whatever you want. It was, it was a really cool experience. And you're also in Boston for the summer, which is fun. 
Great. Thanks. Yeah. I think you demyth, um, uh, you debunk the myth that um, summer on campus is like going to summer school. It is not. It's actually pretty lovely and relaxed on campus <laughs> during that period of time. All right, so we have um, 10 more minutes left. So I like to try to go to a uh, faster pace round robin attempt to get through as many questions as possible. Shalina, I'm gonna start with you in about um, you know, a minute or less. Can you um, talk about um, opportunities for students? Can they actually become authors of papers um, during their time by doing the research at Northeastern or in their co-ops? Yes, you can. A lot of the times, especially if you're in an academic labs and you're working on things with a grad student or the PI directly um, and you're contributing to that project, you will likely be put as a co-author on a publication. So it's very easy to, well, I wouldn't say easy because there's work that gets put into it, but um, yes, there is the opportunity to do so. Excellent. Do you have any personal experience with that? I do have personal experience with that. Um, I didn't get my publications at Northeastern. I did it through an REU at uh, our research experience for undergraduates, which is like a summer program at UMass Medical School, which is in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, but it's very much the same sentiment in which like you just do the work and you write the paper and you know you work with your PI to do so. Great, thank you so much. Um, okay, Morgan, can you talk about what the classes are like, like class sizes, um, and kind of what a general experience would look like for a biochemistry major? Um, I think class size is, is a tough thing to answer because I think it really depends on <clears throat> um, what the class is, if it's inside or outside of the major, um, which semester you're taking it in. I, I can say that a lot of times the lecture cl style classes will be in bigger groups of um, tens to sometimes hundreds of students. I think I think one of my biggest classes was actually Dr. Furtuck's class. I don't remember how many people were in it, um, but it was a lot. But that doesn't, that didn't detract from my experience at all. Like there were still opportunities to raise your hand for questions and I felt that it was just as, you, as um, good of an experience as some of my smaller classes. So like calculus three, there were like seven of us. <laughs> um, but I'll so I add guess to it, that, that um, at that time I was the only person who taught it and now three people teach it per year. So oh, maybe, different. and that could definitely be why that was my, the particular class that was so big. But um, I think that class sizes can vary. I've had a lot of very small classes, which was nice. Um, a couple classes were like mixed with grad students. And I think the wide array of different class styles and teaching styles of different professors. And um, they always, <clears throat> excuse me, they always offer uh, office hours. Their professors are always available outside of class in case you're like, you are in a bigger class and you have questions and you're not comfortable raising your hand in front of the whole class. Um, but overall, I'd say <clears throat> Northeastern does a pretty good job with keeping class sizes small. It just depends, I think, on the subject. And like Dr. Furchuk said, if there's only one professor teaching a certain class and it's super popular, um, that <clears throat> lends itself to being a larger class size. Excellent, thanks. Um, okay, Joanna, I'm going to go over to you next. Um, what was your experience like adjusting to college level coursework? Um, and how did that transition um, work for you? Um, okay, I'm trying to think of the best way to answer this. I, I've always been somebody that that like needs to keep busy. So I wouldn't say, I mean, you know, there's always this feeling like you're never get like, there's always so much to be doing, um, but it always gets done. I think that if you put the time in to the coursework, it is more than manageable. You just have to be willing and not afraid to put the time in. Um, so I would say, I, I don't feel that I really struggled with the coursework in terms of the amount of coursework because I've always held myself very accountable for getting my work done. So I think as long as you stay organized, that college is very, very manageable. Um, it's just a matter of staying organized and just putting in the time to do the work. And once you put in the time, you'll, you'll see the results that you wanna see. I truly believe that. 
Great. And Joanna, I'm actually going to stay on you for a second um, because you came through our NUN program um, in your first semester. And we had a question um, about um, how students can get involved once they come um, to the Boston campus in the spring. So can you talk a little bit about um, making that transition from NUN to the Boston campus? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll definitely say I consider myself to be a little more on the social side. So just like talking to students in classes and getting to know students that were there for their first semester, um, they were able to show me around the campus. Um, one of the places that's no longer on campus, Rebecca's Cafe, that's something I learned through freshmen of my class year that had been on campus the semester prior. Um, I will say the single best thing I did at Northeastern was get involved with the Logothetis Lab. Um, I think that was by far the best, best way. That was my involvement that I felt I really got to know students outside of um, the NUN program. It was working in that lab. But I'm not saying you have to join a lab. I'm saying find something that you're passionate about, join a club, join an organization. Um, team sports uh, is another great way to get involved, running club. Um, so yeah, I think there are definitely ways to get to know people once you get on campus if, if you want to, you just have to put in the effort. Great, thanks so much for that. Um, okay, Shalena, um, I do have one additional MD, PhD question, because I think um, you guys are great role models and have sparked a lot of interest in this. Um, can you talk about what your experience is has been of um, planning to apply for MD, PhD? Um, how has, um, how have you learned about these opportunities, I should say? Yeah, so I came into school wanting to go to medical school and then similar to Joanna, I did research and I fell in love with it and like, I couldn't choose. So um, what I would mostly say is that it starts with like looking at schools and there's like a list of, um, there's a list of like a specific amount of schools that offer these programs. So there's medical schools and then there's schools that offer the MD PhD like dual degree program. And then looking and looking both at like the, um, I would say like the mission statement and what really like aligns with you and what that school might focus on. So like some schools may focus on um, more like populations that are underrepresented, like something that you might be more interested in. And then just really making sure that the research that is also going on at the school aligns with you. So a lot of the times when you apply for like PhD programs, rather than looking at the school, you look at the person who's doing the research because that's really important. Um, so it, it's a balance between those. It's kind of difficult and I'm still like in the, I would say beginning parts of like planning my own um, MD, PhD journey pending. So um, for now, it, it would just really just be looking at, for example, like, um, if I'm looking at like Harvard Medical School and like their program, looking at professors that are doing really interesting PhD work and then um, looking at, the, I guess, the medical school curriculum, which is pretty much the same, I would say, across most schools. Excellent. Thanks. I'm just going to do a quick shameless plug that there are still more opportunities to hear from our pre-med um, advising office as well. So you can certainly sign up for future webinars and we will have the recorded sessions on our video on demand website for College of Science. Okay, Blake, we are actually going to get to the very last question here and you, sir, are going to be answering it. Um, so we've heard from everyone, you all have done amazing opportunities. How difficult is it to actually um, get these opportunities to really leverage yourself to the next level? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I, I would say that um, the simplest answer would be, it's, it's just kind of important to be proactive, like identifying stuff that interests you and then seeking out opportunities. Um, I guess to give something that, and answer this a little bit more useful, um, especially once you start going on like co-ops and you start joining clubs and you just talk with people and you, the more classes you have as well, you start to realize things that you like and that you dislike. You also start to meet people, make connections, kind of build a larger network. And I think one of the most helpful things is just keeping in touch with people. Like I still keep in touch with my co-op supervisors, my coworkers, um, students and faculty I've had classes with. and that really helps with um, kind of finding out about some of the cool stuff that's going on on campus or even off campus and some of the opportunities that you can have even post-graduation. 
That's such a great point. The power of network is definitely something at Northeastern we really, really value. So that is a great point to end on. Um, Dr. Furtick, do you have any uh, last words? We are going to have to close the session in just a second. Um, I did include your email address um, in the chat feature for students if they want to reach out. Either you or a colleague could um, probably answer questions for them. Oh, of course. Any last words? Oh, uh, no, just that I'm so happy and relieved that everyone I asked said yes. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to represent biochemistry. Um, I love that. And um, I was just so glad that they wanted to participate and tell you about themselves. And um, there are just so many great experiences for them to talk about. And I really appreciate their time. And um, it was it was really nice to get to tell you about our degree program. And so if you have further questions, then I would love to answer them. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Furtick, for your time. Thank you to Morgan. Joanna, Blake, and Chalena, you guys are amazing and awesome. I'm going to, um, we're, we're at a loss, but we're really proud of all of you uh, for graduating and moving on to the next chapter. You are great representatives of the college. Um, and to our audience out there, thank you so much for um, taking the time out of your Friday evening to join us. Um, and we hope that we will talk with you soon. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye.